Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 564. What can you do to increase your chances of being protected by immunizations? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Two weeks ago, we talked about what an immunization was. And last week, we talked about those things, those medical problems and other uh, facts, factors that cause you to have less response to an immunization uh, or to have less resistance to getting a virus. And as you remember, viruses are what we are protecting against with immunizations because we don't have good antiviral drugs to treat immunization or treat viruses when we get them. We use, we use antibiotics for bacteria. So that's, that's the difference, just in case you don't remember. Uh, this time, I'd like to conclude our series by helping you figure out what you, would lo- you can do to make your immunizations work better, last longer, and um, all of these things are in your power to do them. They're not, you don't have to go to a doctor necessarily for them. So first we'll talk about pe- basically regular people, what you can do to make your immunization work better. Uh, then high risk cases, what you can do, usually that requires your doctor and you. And then the simple tricks that you can add to your uh, lifestyle or to your supplements that can help your immunization work more completely and to give you a better antibody to a virus. So let's begin with, um, basically, immunizations are recommended generally by doctors for different viruses like the flu. Every year, a different flu goes across the world, and so we get a different immunization to a different type of flu. We recommend that for all of our patients because it is relatively low risk and because the flu can be deadly, and we do not want to have our patients getting this virus because it's very hard to treat once they get it. Um, <clears throat> when the flu season comes around, we say get your, get your immunization, but we don't necessarily tell you how to make that immunization work better when you get it. So first, the first rule is, if you're sick, if you have a bacterial infection, a viral infection, don't get your immunization during that illness. Wait until you're well, because your body is focused on the present, the present problem, the present infection, and it is using your immune system to attack that and try to kill whatever is bothering you so that you can't have enough of your immune system to actually develop an immunity to the virus that you're injected with. And it's a dead virus, not a, not a live virus. Um, <clears throat> you should have as good nutrition as possible. You should, I mean, everyone should do this, but to make your immunizations work better, you should dump junk food. You should eat whole foods. You should actually have healthy snacks that are things you get out of your refrigerator, but not necessarily things that you shop for in the center of your grocery store, but along the outside. So milk, cheese, eggs, vegetables, fruit, meat, all of those things are foods that you should eat, and you should avoid junk food because that does not help your immune system, and it does impair your immune system in some circumstances. Um, A normal blood sugar is uh, always necessary for a good immune response. Those people who carry or always have a high blood sugar, people who are diabetic or pre-diabetic, or people who just drink soda all day, or people who eat uh, sugary snacks and sugary food and lots of bread, those people have a high blood sugar. And that blood sugar limits the ability of your immune system to kill viruses. 
So if you want your immunization to work well, you should avoid eating those things, drinking those things, and you sh if you have diabetes, you should concentrate on getting your blood sugar down to a normal level uh, before and after an immunization so that you can develop a good immunity to that virus. Healthy levels of hormones are always um, helpful. We treat our patients with testosterone, and that improves both the testosterone level and the growth hormone level. Uh, those two hormones are imp improve your immunity by stimulating the thymus gland, which sits behind uh, your breastbone and actually gets smaller and smaller as you get older, just as testosterone goes down and growth hormone goes down as you get older. But by replacing your growth hormone through testosterone and replacing testosterone itself, uh, your thymus will react more uh, positively to an immunization and will create more T killer cells, T helper cells, and the types of white blood cells that make uh, antibodies. So that is one way to get around being older. One way to um, actually even up your risk uh, of getting a virus is by replacing your hormones. Thyroid is also important to replace if your thyroid's low. Um, your immune system is not working at its, uh, at its best. Uh, <clears throat> daily exercise is also important. That helps your immune system work. And everyone should have daily exercise. We always say that, but we don't say why. But if you're trying to get your immune system to work beautifully and to respond to an immunization or to protect you from a viral infection, you should exercise every day. And it should be 45 minutes. So if you can exercise 45 minutes a day, you're going to improve your ability to fight infection, especially with viruses, and to respond to an immunization. Um, the second to the last thing is the hardest thing, controlling your stress. When you're stressed out, when you feel like you can't handle all the things you have to handle, or there is a disaster in your family that... that you're overwhelmed by, your cortisol increases. So your adrenal gland makes cortisol. When you're stressed, it goes up. And when you're chronically stressed, it stays up. Cortisol decreases your immune response. So people who are on cortisol, that's an immune suppressant. If you make your own cortisol, that also suppresses your immune system. So you have to develop ways to handle your stress, like if you have a punching bag in your garage, you can go out and hit the punching bag. Um, I reorganize all my closets, and that makes me feel better. When I have them under control, I feel like I can then handle whatever stress is, is coming up. Everybody's got their way to handle stress. Sometimes it's prayer. Sometimes it's writing a journal. Sometimes it's talking to a friend. You have to figure out your way of handling stress and then employ that way to help your immune system become normal so that you can actually improve your response to an immunization and protect yourself from getting a virus. The last thing doesn't seem like it's related, but it's very related. Your gut bacteria, the bacteria in your gut is actually more numerous than the number of cells you have in your body. You, work, you live in a symbiotic relationship with your gut and the bacteria in it. You need gut bacteria to um, metabolize your food, and to break it down, and for you to absorb it normally. If you have the wrong gut bacteria, then you are not going to absorb the nutrients that you take, including supplements. If you have, if your bacteria is uh, not diverse, it has very few different bacterias, most, of, most patients with that gain weight. They become obese. Obesity is not something that helps your immune system either. But you actually make many of your neurotransmitters and your um, immune uh, building blocks in your gut. And it is then sent to your brain or to your thymus or to anywhere else that your body needs it. So you need to have enough gut bacteria. That requires, in most of us who don't regularly eat mud pies, and, and <laughs> I mean, Americans are really in general clean. We don't have a lot of bacteria around us. Uh, we need to take a probiotic, and a probiotic is a pre-gut bacteria that then sets up shop in your gut and helps you with all of these things. So uh, if, you, if you are kind of crazy clean like I am, you're going to need your probiotics. So 
go to the store, find a good probiotic and start taking it. Uh, generally, it works best when you're taking it with your meal and it will, it will then be absorbed into your intestines and, and start growing. The best way to feed gut bacteria is to eat salads every day or eat roughage, is, as they call it. Uh, that could be like um, eating something with some fiber in it, fiber bread or fiber like celery or vegetables, or, but uncooked vegetables are the best. So if you don't ever eat those for some reason, then you'll need a prebiotic, which has all of those things in it, to feed your bacteria. And you usually need it for a couple months at the beginning of your probiotics, and that will help make a nest, as my doctor daughter says, make a nest for your bacteria, and then your bacteria will then, then actually be able to multiply and be fed, and then you don't need to take the prebiotic longer than a few months. So that's just to set the gut bacteria up. So... Um, we noticed at BioBalance that uh, many of our patients who take testosterone and follow our advice on diet and exercise, take supplements, uh, actually did not have as many viral infections as the average person in the past two years. And they have responded nicely to their immunizations and it has been able to protect them. So that is not a reason not to be immunized, that's a reason to be immunized and have a good response to immunity. I have been immunized. I have, uh, and I recommend only the J and J vaccine. It's just like the flu shot. It's made that way, and it actually works the same way. And I'm very familiar with that. And that is not so scary for me or for anyone else than a new type of vaccine. So, so if you're worried about that, that would be a very safe vaccine for you to take. Now, if you want to prepare your body a week before your immunization to actually have a heightened response, the things that you need to do are to, first of all, take vitamin D, vitamin D3, and 5,000 units is necessary a day if you live where we do in, the, in Missouri. Um, basically, we live at a fairly high latitude so that we don't get sun all the time. Right now, of course, in the summer we get a lot, but the rest of the year we don't. Um, that's necessary for the darker skinned you are, the more vitamin D you need to take orally because you don't absorb it as much from the sun. Another uh, immune stimulator is vitamin C. So vitamin C, Linus Pauling was right, taking vitamin C improves your immune system and, and helps you respond to an immunization with immunity. It also helps you not get viruses, so 1,000 milligrams per day of vitamin C. None of these things are a bad idea to take anyway. Um, zinc is helpful in pro protecting each of your cells uh, from getting a, uh, a virus. The cell, basically, viruses invade the cell, and zinc will help protect you from the invasion so that you can fight it. Um, zinc, 30 milligrams a day is uh, what we recommend to our patients. And sometimes zinc has trouble getting into your cells. So we use a supplement called quercetin. Quercetin, 250 milligrams a day, will help get the zinc into the cell so that you can protect your cells from viral invasion. But it will also help you respond with antibodies to an, uh, an immunization. Like anything, there's a couple, there are some special cases uh, to making your uh, immune, uh, making your um, vaccine work. Uh, people who have autoimmune diseases and take suppressive, immune suppressive drugs do not respond normally to uh, immunizations. Then the other, other people who do not respond normally to immunizations are people with diabetes, especially type 1, that's, that carries with it a, a high blood sugar level. Uh, also type 2 who are out of control. AIDS patients have poor immunizations. Cancer patients undergoing treatment have poor uh, um, um, immunity. Patients over 65, we discussed that. Um, we give them testosterone, but uh, without that, they're at a high risk for not responding to an um, immunization and many chronic diseases. For those patients, you should follow your doctor's instructions and tell your doctor that you're getting an immunization so that they then can help you 
um, after your immunization to make sure that you actually are immune. Because it would be terrible for you to get an immunization, think you're immune, and then take your mask off, go out in public, and think that everything's wonderful, and then get the illness anyway. So um, if you can't lower your risk factors, and these happen to be your problems, you can get a blood test that actually tests for a specific virus, whatever virus you're worrying about, and it can test not for the virus being present, but for the presence of IgG and IgM antibodies. These antibodies um, are what is produced by a, a vaccine. First, the IgM goes up in the first three months usually, and then starts coming down as the IgG, which is your long-term immunity, starts going up. These tests can be done, and they actually measure the amount of your antibodies and can tell you if you are immune to the virus, if you've had the virus, did you uh, obtain immunity, or if you uh, had an immunization, are you really immune? People with high-risk conditions should get these tests after their immunizations to make sure they actually are immune from their vaccine and or from their infection. So these are things that you should know, especially if you're high risk. If you're not high risk, then protect yourself as well as you can. Stimulate your uh, immune system to react fully to an immunization. Uh, my doctor daughter always gives um, her daughter, my granddaughter, um, liposomal C uh, before she gets an immunization. And that stimulates her immune system, which she's three, so she has a good immune system, but it stimulates it to actually respond normally and for her to obtain immunity. So that's a very good idea, especially in pediatric um, immunizations, to help children get a good immune response from a vaccine. You're getting the vaccine anyway. You might as well have the, uh, the protection from it. So... I'm hoping that these, these three lectures helped you understand the importance of vaccines, how they work, how you can improve your response to vaccines, how you can actually improve your immune system for everything so that you don't get viruses. Um, but immunizations are the best way not to get a particular virus. We get immunizations for flu, um, shingles, um, pneumonia, um, pneumonia, if they're, you're over um, 70, you get uh, immunizations for COVID. You can get immunizations for many things. Sometimes we need our immunizations boosted like every 10 years for the, um, uh, we have a t Tdap. And so that's like tetanus and diphtheria. And usually if you are going to have a grandchild and you haven't had a Tdap test, or excuse me, immunization in the recent past, you should probably have another one to protect your the baby that's coming into the household from you getting the pertussis, which is a bad uh, infection for babies. And it in the old days, before we had this vaccine, thousands of babies died every year of pertussis. It's a terrible disease. So you should have your booster shot, which is only every 10 years, for tetanus and, and the uh, pertussis. So, please, please hear me. I am not talking vaccines down. I am talking vaccines when necessary and do and use the most effective and safest vaccine possible, which is the J&J &J vaccine. From my estimation, I can't tell you that that is everyone's belief, but that's mine. And that's what I have followed and actually taken to prevent... Uh, my getting COVID. So I hope this helps you. I hope it keeps you safe and I hope it keeps you healthy. Thank you from BioBalance and from me for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin.
and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.